Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at installing a automatic charging relay. I chose this product made by Blue Sea. It's called the MLACR automatic charging relay. And basically what this is going to do is allow me to charge my house battery and my starting battery via the alternator. Now there's other styles and types of relays out there. This one here had, just happens to be a, a magnetic latching and it's dual sensing. So basically it senses on both ends. I believe some of the other types um, have only like one way check valves, basically diodes. This one here will sense both ends of the batteries. It's gonna detect voltage dropping on either side. And once it detects that, it disengages and isolates both batteries. You could actually charge your starting battery via let's say you had a uh, solar panel or some other form that you were charging your house batteries or your accessory batteries it would actually fl flow through and charge your starting battery again from what I've read it has minimal power draw compared to some of the other isolators out there the other nice feature is you have this remote rocker switch which allows you to isolate or combine both batteries but if you lose power completely there's a way to manually control the device if you need to work on the electrical system you know it's completely locked off when you've turned it to this side and both sides have been isolated Another nice feature is if for some reason your main starting battery did go low, again, it's going to allow you to combine it either using the remote or the manual feature and hopefully you'll be able to start your vehicle. With this type of relay, all we need to do is get a hot lead from the starting battery, your auxiliary battery, and the ground. And having connected those three things, this device will work. But it also has other features where you can control your remote control switch from here and also some other options if you're running two engines. Um, there's another option which is kind of nice where if it senses that you wired this to the starting key switch 12 volt power, when it senses that you turned off your, your vehicle and you turned it back on, it will isolate and not allow current to flow from your starting battery to your auxiliary battery in case you're running some kind of sensitive electronic equipment it senses that you just turned on your vehicle so it'll isolate them both for a couple of minutes to avoid any surges in voltage when you first are cranking up your engine okay guys so what I plan to do as you see here and you saw my previous video, this is where our starting battery is. I'm going to try to install this charging relay somewhere up in here, kind of tucked away out of the way, but you can still access it from the driver's seat. I'll have my wires running behind here. And, and what I did was down in the bottom here, I made myself an access hole. My batteries are in the back of the vehicle, so I ran one knot welding cable which is pretty thick stuff as you can see here I bought a nice little crimper from Amazon it makes some really nice crimps I'll show that to you guys later and I wanted to make sure that I didn't get a lot of voltage drop so that's why I used this size uh, gauge wire so what I did is I, I'm gonna run the wire up to the front then I'll put some shielding on the wire to help protect it even a little bit more. But for now, just so you get an idea, I'll show you. Here is the uh, battery box from underneath. It's just a plastic box. What I did is I made myself an access hole right there using a... Okay, so there's that access hole there. I'm just gonna slide that right through. And I'll probably use... I'm gonna try to use this grommet here. Or you need to figure out some way to definitely uh, make this watertight so that you don't want stuff getting into this box. I 
Again, remember to disconnect your, your quick disconnect here before you do anything electrical. And as you can see here, there, there she is. So I'll just, okay, so I'll pull that out. And basically that's my line. I'm gonna feed it under here and up to my charging relay, back down to the starting battery when I, once I take this apart here and apply a fuse. This charging relay needs power, needs a hot line going to the auxiliary batteries, which runs there and goes to the back needs a hot lead from your house battery, which is gonna go into here, and needs a ground. So I'm gonna take the ground here and connect it to this, and I made a little um, ring attachment here. I crimped it on nice and snug, and it's gonna run behind here, and what I'm gonna do is just attach to this negative ground. Right and it's a little more complicated to add this remote because we're gonna need, it's gonna need some 12 volt power it's going to need to be hooked up to this red wire that comes from the ACR, which is what sends a signal over, but it's going to need power. So the 12 volt that we're going to use for our switch, we know we have 12 volt power here coming from the starter battery. So what I did is I made up a ring terminal, bought a couple of these. They require a two amp minimum fuse, and we're going to tap into here, which will give us our hot power. It'll just be a little bit more accessible behind this plastic. I can hide the this red um, fuse wiring and it'll run up to where I plan to put the the rocker switch. Okay, so all we need to do is connect our starting battery to the system and we'll be all done. Here's the wire. It's going to go to the starting battery. On this one, I believe I used two gauge but the one leading back I used a one aught gauge because it's thicker and I didn't want any uh, as minimal voltage drop as possible. So what we're going to do here is we're going to connect to one of these. I'm not going to put my fuse in right now because I don't have it connected to Okay, so we got all that back together. Now we just need to connect our, our ground. Okay, like I said, I'm not going to put in the fuse yet until I connect the hotline to the rear auxiliary battery. But as you can see here, all the power cords run under here. Um, it's going to get a little tight here, so you got to make sure you add some extra protection to these wires in case uh, they start to you start to apply a little bit of pressure on there because there's more now than there was before. But here's the uh, the ground wire. We ended up connecting it to this this nut here, and here is the charging relay right underneath, uh, where it's easily accessible. Again, having a charging relay is a must if you're going to be out boondocking and you want to charge your batteries while you're driving, going from campsite to campsite, or on long extended trips. You don't want to be using your inverter off of your auxiliary batteries and not have a way to charge them. And also it gives you the option too if you wanted to run something that required, let's say a microwave, you could turn on your engine and not have to worry about draining your batteries down too low. Okay guys, real quickly I wanted to show you. So this is the rear passenger panel. And as you see here where the speaker is, down in here is where I made a hole using a metal hole saw that allowed me to have access to run my, my to run a lot of my wires and to run my wire coming from the alternator from the charging relay. So I just want to show you real quick. Look underneath your van. There's a bunch of these grommets that you can pop off and gives you access into the vehicle somewhat. And that's how I ended up finding this one here. I just removed the rubber pad and when I'm done with everything, I'll put the rubber pad back on and just notch out an area for the wires to go through. And this hole is right behind the rear leaf 
spring in case you're trying to find it right by the rear wheel. Okay guys, thanks for watching and hopefully that kind of gives you an idea how to connect this uh, charging relay made by Blue Sea. As you've seen in my videos, I use a lot of their products just because they're very well built and uh, very rugged. Um, it's not the cheapest one out there, but it's definitely supposed to last longer and be more efficient than the other relays. And again, it was very easy to put together and it has some really nice features. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for some more videos.